project here in Australia. We have been working with the stone fruit. Why with the stone fruit? Because around 40 million tons of stone fruit are produced annually worldwide across 5 million hectares. Exactly, we have been working with nectarines and peaches. So they are an economically important group producing over 92 million tons. And Victoria produces almost 80% of this food. The value of nectarines was almost 300 million in 2017. Why we need to do the fumigation or the methylbromide? Because we want to improve the marketability of export fruit. There is a need to produce fruit with better post-harvest quality, flavor, and texture. So we were testi testing an air freight export protocol because Australia some fruit can be exported to other countries during the off season using methylbromide fumigation. And Australia has different potential markets in China, USA, <coughs> and New Zealand, and Thailand, sorry. But all these markets, they have quarantine barriers due to the most important food flies, as you know better than me. So we were doing air freight because ship um, export takes more than three weeks, or at least three weeks. So um, the fruit then lose a lot of quality, and we want high quality products to that countries. We were using methyl bromide. Methyl bromide is an odorless gas to the enclosed area for a set period of time, and it required to be retained in the enclosure for the specific the most commonly used protocol is 32 grams mm, cubic meter during 2.5 hours at a temperature of 21 degrees or above and not more than 50% of the chamber load, followed by onshore cold treatment at 4.44 degrees or lower for four days. The problem with that protocol is that the industry is claiming some issues with the fruit. They are, mm, they are finding brown spots on the fruit so we were testing a protocol with lower dose. Our protocol was 18 grams a square meter, mm, cubic meter, sorry. And then we had to put the formulation during 5.5 hours instead of 2.5 at 18 degrees and no more than 34% chamber load. A bit of the state of the art. There are not many papers or literature talking about the methyl bromide effect itself on the fruit, I mean. So the only the we follow or we try to follow the this paper from this one, sorry, from Queensland. They were testing low dose methyl bromide against fruit flies to improve market access to, for summer fruit like us. But they were testing in an experimental scale, so they were using one meter cubic chambers, and we are using commercial chambers. That's the difference, the main difference. Mm, our aims, we have three main aims. So has methylbromide fumigation any effect on fruit quality? Has the process of warming up the fruit any effect on fruit quality? What does it mean? That means that the industry harvests the fruit from the field they put inside the cold storage, and then they decide which fruit they want to export. So they have to warm up the fruit because the fumigation protocol, as I said, they use at 21 degrees. But they don't know if this effect of warming up the fruit affects on the quality. So we want to try, we test that. And then the other um, aim is, does fumigation have any effect on volatile organic compounds in fruit flesh? The objective of this project was to generate data to all of the improvement of export protocols suitable for air freight. Industry, of course, can take advantage of market opportunities in Asia or New Zealand or whatever, especially during peak demand. Let's go to the materials and methods. So our plant material, we did three harvests in Tatura research station. So we harvest a snow flame, SF25, which is a white peach, then a nectarine, August bright, and finally August flame, a yellow peach. We wanted to test these three varieties. After we harvest it, we put in the cold and the gas chambers in the turret too, 
and then we brought the fruit to AgriBio where we did where we did the storage trail and the quality assessment. And finally, we brought the fruit to McLeod, not the fruit, the bios for the GC, where we were, are working right now. Each harvest, we have a 660 fruit at commercial maturity. Based on DA meter, DA meter is a device, non destructively which measures the difference of two wavelengths correlating this value to the chlorophyll content in the flesh of the fruit that can be used as a maturity indicator for us. So the two pictures were correct and we will show about the, the results of the pictures. We will skip the nectarines due to some issues with the values of the emitter. After we had this fruit, we did it in a post-harvest fruit design to control some disease of the stone fruit. Once we harvest the fruit, the 660 per variety, then 60, 60 of them we put at 20 degrees to simulate the shelf life, which means a supermarket life. And then the, 600, the rest of the fruit, the 600, were introduced to the cold room at one degree overnight. The next morning, we took the fruit from the cold room and we put inside the glass chambers to warm it up the fruit until 18 degrees. And then this 400, we used the two gas chambers that you saw in the previous picture, where one, we were using the fumigation gas, and in the other one, there was only the control of the warm up of the fruit, so no gas inside. And the other 200 were kept at one degree. So we have four treatments, fumigated, which is treated with um, methyl bromide, control fuming, which is only warm up the fruit but without methyl bromide, control cold after harvest is kept at one degree and that's it, and the control, which is shelf life directly, 20 degrees. After we did these treatments, we brought all the fruit here at Everybio, and we weight each fruit and we ate each fruit. So, just to make sure that it's clear, all fruit at one degree overnight, except the 60 fruit that they were kept at 20, then 400 fruit were introduced in the fumigated chambers at 18 degrees every morning, the warming light prosciutto, and the other 200 were in the city fumigated chamber without methyl bromide, and the other 200 were kept at one degree. If we focus in the fumigation prosciutto, we put the fruit inside the cold, the gas chamber, is the first picture that you can see, and we put seven thermocouples on the fruit to test the temperature in the core of the fruit. So we need 18 degrees in the core of the fruit to then we can, uh, we can start the fumigation process when we have the correct temperature. So we wait until the fruit was at 18 and we started inserting the methyl bromide. The methyl bromide protocol has like the first, has two steps. So the first one is the equilibrium of the gas inside the chamber, which take about two hours every time, more or less. And the second one is when you have the equilibrium, you can start the fumigation. We took 5.5 hours, as I said before. So as you can imagine, the fruit was till from the morning till night warming up. So it's about 15 hours that can affect to the fruit. Once we are in AgriBio, we start the temperature treatments. So we have the 60 fruit at 20 degrees and we will analyze the quality at zero, two, four, six, and eight days of this fruit. Then we put 240 fruit at two degrees, 80 fruit per treatment, 200 fruit at four, four degrees, 280 uh, fruit per treatment, and 120 fruit at 20 degrees. So after this, we had two removals. One, after four days of cold storage for the fruit at two degrees, 
and the second removal after eight days, and another removal, um, and the, for the four degrees, the same, two removals, after four days and after eight days. Mm -hmm. And for all of them, we did the quality at zero, two, four, and six days, at 20 degrees. The quality analysis, what, what we did. Once the fruit was out from the cold storage, from the chamber, we wait all the fruit another time. So now, then we can know the weight loss inside the cold room. Then we DA the, all the fruit, which we can know the maturity stage of that fruit once it's out from the chamber. Half of them we put inside the airtight jars during three hours. And then we could measure the ethylene and the respiration. We did the firmness, we measured the firmness of all the fruit, the sugars, acids, and then the volatiles of half of them. Let's go to the volatiles analysis. How we prepare the sample. We peel each fruit. <laughs> we cut each fruit, half of them. Then we put peel and flesh in different bags. And we insert at minus 80 degrees. Then we mm, ground the fruit, we pull the, fr the fruit, for the moment only the flesh. Peels are still in the freezer, let's see. <laughs> so we did the flesh, trying to keep all the time the minus 18 degrees. And then we prepared the vials for the GC. So we put one gram of the flesh of the fruit, one milliliter of an antioxidant solution, and one microliter with three internal standards. And then direct to the GC to analyze them through SPME. Let's go to the results. As I said before, we will compare the white peach and the yellow peach. The first two graphs, the first column is the white peach, the second column is the yellow peach. Each graph here, we have the weight loss in 10%. So each graph has on the top part the X, uh, uh, X, uh, the three removals, so the directly at 20 degrees, the first removal after four days in cold storage, and the second removal after eight days in cold storage, showing the zero, two, four, and six at 20 degrees, simulating shelf life. What we can see here, ah, and then sorry, the top part is at two degrees, and the bottom, Always it's 40 degrees graphs. So what we can see here that there are sorry, no significant differences between varieties, uh, between treatments, sorry, apart of con mm, control fruit. Control fruit for white peach or SF25 lose more weight in percentage than the others at 20 degrees, which make a lot of sense. But what is a bit weird is that the control fruit AF lost, lose less weight in percentage than the others at 20 degrees. I forgot to explain to you that the um, colors, green always is the fumigated fruit, blue is the control, orange is the control fuming, so the fruit that was warm up, and the yellow is the control cold, the fruit that was all the time at one degree. Let's go to see the firmness of this fruit. Unstored formulated fruit have less firmness. As you can see here, the green line is always down for both varieties. Bo um, both graphs at 2 degrees and 4 are the same at shelf life, of course, because we only have 1 in 20 degrees. And there are no significant differences between treatments at first and second removals. If we focus in acids, Stone fruit metabolize acids after harvest, which mask the sweetness. We can see here that higher values for the control fruit were found. And at the second removal, we had uh, for the fumigated fruit absence of juice, which means that this fruit was mm, more stressed. So for the moment here, we can see some issues with the fumigated fruit even though all of them 
and the second removal had less use. For the other variety, that one was yellow, uh, white peach. Let's go to the yellow peach. Here we have juice, so it seems that it's not as affected as the other variety. And no significant differences between treatment and either between temperatures were formed, as you can see. It's <coughs> if we focus in the sugar acid ratio, we can see that uh, this one is a measure of the perception of likability. So higher values, higher acceptance for the consumers. And there are no biological differences between the treatments. For AF, the yellow peach, we have the same results. So no biological differences between either treatments or temperatures, which is very interesting. DA. As I said before, DA is a um, measure of the maturity of the fruit. We were DAing all the fruit every two days inside the cold storage or out, depends on where, where they are. So we have the evolution of them for all. Like the first graph is the control one, which is linearly decreasing, which makes sense. And then we have shelf life. All of them, they have um, the similar trend. So at two degrees, for um, yeah, two, first of all, at two degrees and four degrees, we can see the period of the four days inside the cold storage, which the fruit is maintaining the maturity. And once it's at 20 degrees, it starts maturing, dropping the DA value. And the same for the second removal at eight days storage. <laughs> at two degrees, we can see that eight days, and at four degrees, Similar results we have for the AF, the other variety, the yellow peach. So we can see perfectly the first removal here. It's a bit more confusing, the first removal, but the second, we can see exactly when we are taking out the fruit from the cold storage. Ethylene production is an indicator the stress of the fruit too. So in most cases here, ethylene production is higher for fumigated fruit. So here we can see that fumigated fruit is a bit a more stressed than the others. Fumigated and controlled cold fruit from the second removal at two degrees show a higher ethylene production that can be possible due to the variety of the fruits. So and the length of the storage minimizes the gap between treatments. As you can see here, it's very clear. At the second removal, they are more close at, at shelf life. For the other variety, the yellow peach, in all cases, ethylene production is much higher for fumigated fruit. Here we have no differences. At two degrees, fumigated fruit show more differences with the other treatments than four degrees. And fumigated and contrary fumy fruit from the second removal at two degrees show a higher peak. The other thing that we can see here is the fumigated fruit has the senescence peak before the others, so it means that it's more mature before. CO2 production is another indicator of uh, stress of the fruit. And here we can see that it's very well correlated with ethylene production, if you can remember the previous graph, showing that the, fumigated affect, the fumigation affects the unstored fruit, but the length of the storage mediates the differences between treatments and all the time, as the previous slide. So we can see here that the fumigated is more stressed than the others, but every time it's going closer and closer if we length the storage period. The respiratory quotient is the, relate, the ratio between the CO2 and uh, between O2 consumed. So here what we can see is that at the beginning, fumigated fruit always, in these two cases, have higher values than the others. So fumigated seems that it's using sugars as a respiration reaction and the others, they are using fatty acids, malic acids, whatever, but they are using sugars. 
The last step is the volatile organic compounds, which we are under construction. We didn't have enough time to finish all the analysis. Today we are finishing the first flesh variety, and we have to treat all the data. So I hope we will show you soon the results. Maybe Dario can show you them, <laughs> or I can come another time and explain <laughs> the results. Let's go for the conclusions. The effect of the fumigation treatment is very much affected by the variety of the pitch, as we can see. AF is affected by cold storage too. Ferments, sugars, and as or acids are not affected by the fumigation treatment. We couldn't see any biological differences between them. However, metabolic process, ethylene production and respiration show that fruit was stressed due to the fumigation treatment. Warming up the fruit did not affect fruit during the short storage period test, so is a good result for the industry. Future work would be interesting to have an anomics approach to the effects of fumigated on fruit quality. Thank you very much for your attention.